Okay, everybody, welcome back. And uh, now we're, let's try to get this over, shall we? I think this has gone on just a little too long already. Uh, okay, so we talked about the movie. Now I just want to give some you know final thoughts about it. And like I said earlier in the videos that um, I do like this movie. You know, it's, that's really the big thing. You know, I mean, of course, it has that great, you know, ad line to avoid fainting. Keep repeating, it's only a movie, only a movie, only a movie which this has been ripped off in the upcoming years plenty of times. But I just, you know, I think that's really why I like it, though. This was a movie that, you know, before I ever saw it, it was, you know, it was touted this movie that was so vulgar and vile and violent and you shouldn't be watching it and stuff. And it lives up to that. You know, I've seen horror movies that, you know, uh, before I ever watched them, I heard like, you know, you know, like Three on a Meat Hook is a good example. You know, I've heard people say like, oh my God, you'll never be able to watch a movie like that. You can never sit through it. It's so disgusting and, and it's so disturbing and, and you'll never get through it. And I'm watching it. It's all like, this is a really bad psycho ripoff, you know, and I can't say the same for, you know, Last House on the Left. It lives up to what it was supposed to be. And the fact is, it's like, you know, I know people over the years, they've said, you know, like this movie is it's so vile and horrible and this and that and everything else. But you know what? This movie stuck around. People are talking about it. Hell for the, when they did the remake, they had to tone it down. You know, they really did. They toned it down. And it's like the, the remake, it's just, it's so bland. There's just not really anything to it. Okay. Maybe like, you know, the one creative kill sticking the guy's head in the microwave, but that's about it. You know? And then, you know, hell, they tried remaking this movie again. And it's like, okay, maybe one or two decent, you know, gruesome parts to it. But it's just the same movie all over again. So, you know, and it's just for me, it's just, you know, I'd rather stick with this. I'm sorry. You know, it's like to hell with chaos, to hell with, uh, you know, you know, the remake. You know, I'd rather stick with this. You know, it's like if you were going to do the story again, you know, why not? Why not just go balls out? do what Craven originally was going to do until everybody told him, like, there's no way we would do that. And they talked him out of it. You know, if you're going to redo this again, why not go totally balls out with it and just do the porno mixed with graphic bloody horror version of it and, you know, make it completely unwatchable. Try that, you know. But, and that's the thing, though, too, is like you had some, you know, you had, you know, a really great talented actor in David Hess. The guy was scary. He was commanding. He, you know, he got you to want to watch him. He was interesting. You know, he made a great villain. He would go on to make a great villain on all these other movies. Hell, he'd go on to direct movies himself, like To All a Good Night. You know, so Wes Craven. I mean, sure, yeah, like I said, I mean, take that into consideration though when you think about this movie. This was a guy who he didn't even know really what horror movies were when he made this movie. He never really watched them. You know, just didn't really have any interest in them. He was more into, um, you know, like comedies and I think maybe like dramatic material. Horror was not really something he knew about or really had any interest in until, you know, he was given the challenge to have to make one. And honestly, like I said, I've seen horror filmmakers that, you know, they've done their first movie. I've seen a lot worse. And I've seen people who just, you know, like, it's like, that was the thing. I mean, at least he tried to do a good movie. You know, he really wanted to try to tell a good story and try to make it interesting. Whereas like I've seen horror filmmakers or, you know, filmmakers, they're given the assignment to do a horror film. And it's like, you could tell they just have no investment in the story or anything like that. It's just nothing to it. You know, I mean, at least this, you know, this holds up. And the fact that even to this day, it still has a shock value to it that people still talk about this movie. It's still regarded as like this horrible movie. You really never should be watching. That's a testament to how, you know, how much of a good horror film this really is. You know, I mean, you know, we're all horror fans, you know, people watching this video, we're all horror fans and stuff. And, you know, we've seen movies that like, I mean, it's like they're out of your, the minute you finish watching it, it's already out of your head. You don't think about it. You're just kind of moving on to the next horror film. This movie doesn't do that. This movie sticks with you. It's disturbing. It has moments of great tension in it. Sure, the comedy doesn't work very well in this movie, but you know, still, you know, you got the you got the score by, you know, done by David Hess, you know, who's a musician 
And that's one of the great things, too, about this edition that I love. It comes with the soundtrack. Now, I don't even have vinyl. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I don't have a record player. But I did come across the vinyl soundtrack for this movie in a record shop recently before, you know, all this horrible unpleasantness started happening. But I did come across this. And my God, and it, the record was twenty four ninety nine, And I got to be honest with you. I was so tempted to go ahead and buy that. And go ahead and, you know, just buy the record. And I'm sure there are probably people out there like, you dumb shit, you should have. And I was so tempted. But it's like, I've already got the CD soundtrack right here. I have it, you know, I have it on my phone. I have it on my laptop. I have it on my tablet. So it's like, you know, I've already got it. I got, you know, and a great thing too, this has got the poster. I have the poster hanging proudly above my bed. And just, this is just overall. I mean, that's the thing. This is, in my opinion, you know, good or bad, it is the definition of a horror film. You know, it sticks with you. You still remember it after you see it. There are elements that are going to stick with you throughout the rest of your life while you watch this, after you've watched this. Um, you know, it's like the movie still has power overall, you know, for a movie made in 1972. You know, the movie is, you know, coming up on its 50th anniversary, and this movie still has the ability to be disturbing and shocking. That's that's a testament to this movie and to the abilities of writer director Wes Craven, producer Sean S. Cunningham, people who worked on the crew like you know Steve Miner, um, you know the actors like David Hess. Now the one actor that you know I told you about this in one of the earlier videos, like Fred Lincoln. This dude pisses me off. I'm going to be honest with you right here. It's like when you watch the bonus stuff on here and you watch his interviews, like he. He seems like he doesn't know what the hell he's even talking about half the time. You know, it's like he goes back and forth over, like, he is constantly, like, putting down the movie. Oh, this movie is a piece of shit. The script was garbage. Oh, this was crap. This was terrible. It's the worst thing I ever read in my life. Oh, it's like, then why did you take the role? I mean, aside, obviously, for a paycheck. You know, you were doing porn, dude, you know? But then he goes around and tells everybody, oh, you know, so I'm the one who told him how to do the special effects. I'm the one who told him how to, you know, tie the, tie the condoms together, put fake blood in it so it looks like intestines. And okay, so does that mean if, you know, uh, does that mean if, you know, everybody looks at this and they say that the, the special effects look like crap, that means we get to blame you for it? Here's a guy who's sitting there, he's like, you know, just about insulting everybody in the entire cast and crew and everything else saying how this movie, you know, Oh, I wish, I wish I could forget that I was ever there and all this other kind of, then the son of a bitch turns around and he's complaining that his name isn't on the poster. It's like, make up your mind, dude. Are you upset or what? What is it with you? You're met. You know, you're sitting here talking about what piece of crap garbage movie this is, how Wes Craven had no talent whatsoever and all this other kind of stuff. The people on there had no clue what they were doing. You had to hand, you had to handhold everybody through the whole thing and all this other kind of stuff. And you know, this movie is just the most vile piece of trash ever put to film, but yet you're pissed off because your name wasn't on the poster. You know, and you didn't get more credit, you know, and all this kind of stuff. You're sitting here like, you know, <clears throat> you know, you're putting this movie down, but, you know, yet you're, you know, doing porn for a living. You know, a lot of people would kind of, you know, call you to task on that one, buddy. Sitting here, you know, saying like the only good thing that I could remember was, you know, it's like I was having sex. With, what was it? The wardrobe girl or the hairstyle girl or makeup girl, whatever she was. I was having sex with this one girl and, um, you know, uh, Lucy Grantham, who played Phyllis. I was having sex with her at the same time, too. So I was getting laid while I was watching, while I was making the movie and all this stuff. So it's like, make up your mind, dude. Either you hate this movie, think it's, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, if you hate this movie so much, why do you even bother to show up to do the interviews? You know, I mean, shit, for a long ass time, for decades upon decades, Terry McMinn did her best to avoid anything to do with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. She hated the movie. She, you know, you know. I mean, she didn't realize, like, over, I mean, over time, she started to realize what a fan base it, it, you know, got. And, you know, she warmed up to it and warmed up to the fans and, you know, realizing that, you know, this movie was going to pay her back. Even though it didn't give her a career, it didn't make her a lot of money. But over time, it was, this movie is going to start to pay her back for, you know, all the hard work and effort she put into it. You know, 
but for the longest time, she, you know, and she stuck to her guns. You know, she made clear she was not going to do interviews. She made it clear she was not going to, you know, talk about it in any way or any of that kind of stuff. She did not want anybody to know she even had anything to do with Chainsaw Massacre. And it's like, if you really felt that strong, why didn't you just come out and say, hey, I don't even want to talk about this movie. Okay. You know, just don't do the interviews. Don't do any of that stuff. You know, obviously, I'm sure he got paid to do it and stuff, but, you know, still. It's like, you know, if you hate this movie so much, this just just stay away from it. Don't do any press for it. Just go keep making your porno movies. You know, I think he I think he directs porn now and stuff, but anyway, that being said, just oh man. But it's like, you know, like I said, you know, it's like, yeah, this movie definitely has, you know, I love this movie, Warts and All. And it's definitely got problems with it, but that's the thing, you know, this movie, it sticks with you, you know, you're gonna remember it. And that's what a good horror movie should do. You know, you're going to remember it. You're going to, you know, even if it's something horrible, you never want to see it again. You're going to remember watching this movie. It's like, that's what a good horror film should do. It should stick with you. It should not just, you know, just, you know, just pass through your mind and that's it. And it's like, okay, I'm done. On to the next thing. So, but I mean, David Hess, you know, he went on, you know, he, and this was harder for him than anybody else because everybody, anybody saw him, if they watched the movie, anybody that saw him in the street, they thought he was going to turn around and kill them. You know, they thought he was that guy, you know, but then, you know, David Hess, you know, in real life was actually kind of this very laid back, very funny guy, had a good sense of humor, liked to joke around and stuff. And, you know, but you get him in front of a camera, tell him to act like a psycho badass. And, you know, he goes and he delivers every single time, you know, so. And that's the thing, you know, like, even if this movie isn't of the highest quality, everybody that worked on this movie, they really gave it their all because they wanted to try to do well. So, Jeremy Rain, who who uh, played Sadie, she went on, they're no longer married, but she married Richard Dreyfuss for a while there. So, unfortunately, uh, Sandra Cassell, who played uh, uh, Mary, unfortunately, she never acted again. Anyway, Mark Scheffler, you know, he was a comedian. He went on to have a good writing career and everything else. And, you know, he still performed and uh, he appeared in other movies as well. So, anyway, just, that's pretty much it, you know. So, it's like, I just, uh, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate this movie, you know. And I appreciate that Wes Craven made it. And, you know, even though I'm sure if he were alive today, he'd probably look at me and be like, dude, what the hell's wrong with you? Why would you appreciate this movie? But. It's like, because it is what it's supposed to be, a horror movie that sticks with you. A horror movie that, you know, it's, you're going to remember this once you've seen it, so. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I think I've gone on way too long as it is, and uh, I just wanted to talk about this movie. You know, it's, you know, it's a great movie, you know, and and that's the thing. You know, it was just, it was the start of, you know, a great master of horror who, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. I miss Wes Craven, you know, I miss that he's no longer here making movies I really love to see, you know, that was the thing, for many, many years, you know, it was like, if I heard a Wes Craven movie was coming, especially if he wrote and directed it, I was like, oh, hell yes, I've got to see it, you know, and I know kind of like over time, it seems like the opinion, the popular opinion kind of turned into, well, the only good movies that Wes Craven ever did was, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream was like, no, I don't agree with that at all. Okay, he made many good films. In my opinion, this is a good film. I'll take this over the remake, and I'll take this over that movie Chaos any day of the week. I've already said that about 20 times already. I think his, personally, I prefer his version of Hills Have Eyes over the remake. Hell, I defended Hills Have Eyes Part 2. Swamp Thing, I've defended that movie. Um, What else? Deadly Blessing is a great movie that a lot of people I don't think has ever even known that exists, you know? His other movies, you know, like, you're going to sit here and tell me Serpent and the Rainbow wasn't a good movie? You're going to tell me Shocker wasn't any good or People Under the Stairs? You're really going to sit here and tell me that, you know, Wes Craven's new Nightmare wasn't any good? No, just... By the way, that's that's it, like I said. Yeah, I have I've pretty much exhausted everything I've had to say. You know, just... I understand, like, the people who made the movie, they weren't the most proud of it, but... Still, you know, it's like... You're not proud of it, but then you'll go do the conventions or you'll do the interviews or, you know, you'll sit here and bitch about what a terrible movie it was and how Wes Craven wrote the worst script in the world and everything. But then you're upset because your name isn't on the poster. So 
whatever. <sighs> anyway, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I do love The Last House on the Left. I think it's a good movie. So if anybody took the time to watch all of this, and I mean all of this, three friggin' videos of it, listen to me go on and on and ramble and rumble and everything else, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. If you watch this video, if you haven't already, you know, if you like the video, please like. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I promise next time I'm going to try to do a movie review where I don't span it out to three freaking videos. This is the second time I've done that now, by the way. The first time was when I did... Um, when I was talking about the three Manson movies from, you know, 2019. So this is the second time. I need to try to keep from making this a habit. So try to get my thoughts more in order and just, you know, get it done in least amount of time. So anyway, that's it. This is your friend, the Nightwalker. Take care. I'll see you all later. Good night.